Uh, I hate it when french fries are really soft and soggy. No. Crunchy, please. It's a brand new YouTube channel about writing. Today I just want to talk a little bit about my current project. It's called The Elementalist Rise of Hara. What is Hara? Well, I guess you'll have to read the book to find out, won't you? Basically the story is about an aviatrix who has this rare genetic condition and she is approached by a government agent who says, hey, we have a cure, but if you want it, we're asking that you'll spy for us. Hmm. Yeah, the fact that the government's already involved with this is suspicious. At least, that's what I'm hoping, because that's kind of the point. So, this is a fantasy novel, right? So, what I will say is that voice condition has a whole lot to do with something fantastical. <coughs> Special abilities. As far as the concept goes, um, I like to describe it as a little bit of conspiracies about Amelia Earhart being a spy after she disappeared, you know, taking that that basic idea and morphing it with something like um, Avatar The Last Airbender or Legend of Korra. And the world is probably more similar to Legend of Korra than its predecessor. Um, it's very inspired by uh, than our world during the 1940s as far as the level of technology goes. Though I will say that in my character's world, um, airships have been developed far more than airplanes have, so that's a little bit of a difference. A minor difference, but something kind of fun to play around with. Let's talk about my main character, Voy Roman. Um, she is bilingual, she speaks her world's version of English, which I call Wendy, and then she also speaks a, a, an invented language called Beryllian, since she is half Beryllian. Oh, what was I going to say? So in Beryllian, she actually says her name, Voix Roman. It's a little bit inspired by French. So anyways, uh, Voy is a pilot of airplanes, and in her world, at the time of the beginning of this book, um, airplanes are not highly regarded. They're seen as toys, playthings, no one really takes them seriously. I mean, there are some crazy pilots out there doing stunts and, you know, the barnstorming and setting altitude records, and that was Voy for a while. But then she had an accident, which um, kind of took her career in a not so great direction and she's fallen back onto her um, education as an art history major which <laughs> is kind of funny because she dropped school a little bit early like two weeks shy of graduation in order to become an airplane pilot. So yeah that's a little bit about voice character. So at this point in the story, she's kind of at a low place in her life. Um, to make matters worse, she's 24, and people with her condition, which I call Emilesia, um, are told that by their 25th birthday, they're probably going to have to live in an asylum because the medication that they take to moderate their condition, um, it becomes ineffective. Um, by this point of their life and so they need to be admitted into a special care facility where where doctors can administer them um, higher dosages of the medication that they're on and that can only apparently be done by a professional it's not something they just give out to people and even then um, it, there's just a lot of mystery kind of around this condition and um, exactly how people with this condition are treated once they get to the asylum. Voy has an aunt who lives in the asylum but she never goes to see her and we don't really know why at the beginning of the story and actually don't explore that in this particular novel but I'm going to in future novels. 
So yeah, Tig Boy at this very low point in her life in comes this shady government agent who's posing as a social worker but really isn't and basically puts forth to her the idea that there is actually a cure for her condition which she's been told there really isn't except for a small population of um, em emilesiacs who are magically cured without explanation like they just seem to overcome the condition with no explanation whatsoever um, and that's a that the statistic is one out of 12 people with the condition magically get cured well here comes this guy saying uh, we've got a cure but we want you to spy for us yeah so that's where voice story starts it's kind of twofold I have there's a lot of like um, invented politics going on on the other side of boys world people with abilities are treated a lot differently there's no government program for them um, other than the fact that they're hunted down to extinction so it's pretty bleak on the other side of the world a lot more so than in boys situation which she has no idea about nobody knows this is all very hush hush um, instead we see this side of the world through another character's eye her name is Milia Furlan. She's a special envoy for uh, the League, which is an alliance of nations who have this government program in place to protect protect people with this condition and the general public. So Milia is off on the other side of the world dealing with these people who are being hunted down to extinction. She started this kind of foreign exchange program where she takes in people with these abilities who have been captured by their government and um, tries to convince them to go on this medication that Voye is on for a while until they can be um, basically indoctrinated in a different way of approaching their lives and a different way of using their abilities. They want to see if they can be turned into trustworthy citizens. And so uh, they'll take them off the foreign government's hand, bring them over to their side, monitor them for several years. This is a several year long process. Um, once they feel like they can, be, they can be trusted, they will assign these Emilesiacs with special assignments of various nature. Um, and kind of see how they do and they of course after a while they can get off the medication and use their abilities but they have to do so in a very restricted secretive way and then if that works then they're able to return to their um, mother country in this case that would be Darmoil. There's also some controversy with Darmoil at the beginning of the story because they have kind of conquered people further south of them and so it's it's become an empire of different races and a lot of people in the southern part of Darmoil they want to secede they don't want to be a part of the greater Darmoil empire and so there is um there's some protests going on especially because Darmoil has plans to join the League Alliance um, who Milia the special envoy represents so there's a lot of, um, in, like I said, a lot of invented politics. Uh, there is, of course, fantasy action, uh, a little bit of mystery, some conspiracy, and I don't know. I have a, I've had a lot of fun working on it. It's taken a long time to really get that concept to feel real to myself and to feel authentic. And I, I spent a lot of time developing the characters and the world and just really trying to flesh it out and make it feel more believable so yeah that's that's it that's all i have to say about my first book again it's called the elementalist rise of power uh you can check out more information about that on my website at tiamariewhite.com i also have some snippets of my work um under eight sentence sunday and i'll also put a direct link to that in the description box below. This book is going to be part of a trilogy as far as I can tell from now. I'm going to be wrapping up my edits on it this weekend and then I can get to the 
I'm having beta readers take a look at it, which is really exciting. And then, um, I think I'm going to just go ahead and jump into the second book, start working on that, and just get the whole trilogy done before I even think about querying agents or self-publishing. I'm not sure which route I'm going to take yet, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Alright, so that's all about me and my work. Um, why don't you tell me a little about yourselves? If you're a writer, what kind of project are you working on at the moment? Or, if you're not a writer, does my concept sound like something you would be interested in reading? If so, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Talk to you again soon.